turning to John chapter 11. We're going to be looking at the story of Lazarus. And we're gonna be talking this morning a little bit about listening. So I'll give you a moment to turn. John chapter 11. And I would ask when you have it, if you would please stand for the reading of the word. And we're going to be jumping around. We're not going, I'm not gonna read every uh, verse, but we're gonna come back to a little bit. So John chapter 11, starting at verse one. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. Down to verse three. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days and then said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. And jumping down to verse 11, he went on to tell his disciples, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but Let's go to him. Verse 17, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And then he has a dialogue with Mary and Martha, which we're going to examine in just a little bit. And jumping down to verse 38, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said, but Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by, the time, by this time there is a bad odor. He has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always heard me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they might believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said, take off the grave clothes and let him go. The word of the Lord, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day, this Sunday morning where we can come into your house and we can worship you through singing, through reading. Father, we give you our offerings of praise and thanksgiving and our, and our offerings from all that you have blessed us. And Father, now we come to this time where we look to hear from you. And I ask, Lord, that as, as you have given uh, amazing revelation this week and you have guided me through scriptures and, and shown new things, I ask, Lord, that you would have your way and have control. Father, I submit myself to you that, that this would be a mouth through which you speak, that you would speak words of life that would be powerful and effective to go to the very hearts of those that are listening, that they would bring life to dead places, just like we heard Lazarus come alive. Father, I pray that you would have control of this time, that nothing in this sanctuary would be a distraction, that we would be able to tune in and hear from you. Father, I ask that nothing be said that would not be according to your will and nothing would take away from you getting the glory this morning. May we, Father, now fall at your feet with open ears and open hearts to receive that which you have prepared for us this day. We ask, Lord, that you would have your way this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, amen. Amen, thank you. Many of you have probably heard the story of Lazarus many times, but this is a cool story because in this story, Jesus takes someone who is dead and calls them back to life again. 
But at the beginning of the story, much like our lives, we don't know how the story's gonna end, do we? If we're 15 or if we're 50, we don't know what's ahead. And in this story, we have Lazarus who was sick. And we hear that his sisters, Mary and Martha, these were people that Jesus loved. So I want you to get a picture as we talk this morning about this situation of death. This is with God's people. These are not people anywhere in this story that it says that they didn't know God or he didn't care about them. But it's, it's interesting. If we listen to how this story opens, I think it's verse, let me see, verse five. It says, Jesus loved Mary or Martha and her sister, which is Mary and Lazarus. So he loved this family. So it says, so when he heard that he was sick, he went to save him. He went to help him. Is that what it says? No, it says, it says he loved them. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed where he was. That's peculiar to me. Why, why would he do that when his people that he loved needed help? I mean, have you ever felt that way? That maybe you needed God in this moment, that maybe you didn't have someone who had passed away or was sick. But yeah, probably many of us have had that situation. And we say, okay, God, come, show up. We need you here now. And it says he loved them, and yet he stayed where he was two more days. See, when we look at the beginning of how this story opens, Jesus gave the word. He spoke words that have power. He said, this sickness will not end in death. He said it, but the question is, did they hear it, right? I feel like maybe this game that we played and we, it's, it's kind of funny and to see us trying to remember to listen for Simon Says, but in this moment in their lives, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, they needed Jesus. They had a lot going on, but he had a plan and he spoke and he said, this sickness will not end in death. And quite interesting as well, he says in verse 14 that Lazarus is dead. If you have the King James Version, it says, Lazarus is dead and I am glad. Okay, that's interesting for Jesus to say. He said, Lazarus is dead, but I am glad for your sake. Because see, Jesus had a plan for the disciples that they would believe. He had a plan for Lazarus that he was gonna come back to life. And he had a plan that God would get the glory. Jesus had it all under control. We don't have to worry in this story, knowing the end, okay, we're all good, we know what's gonna happen. But in this story, Jesus, he has it under control, but they don't know that yet. So I wanna look a little bit at how Mary and Martha react to this and think about maybe in our lives we can find a little bit of Mary or a little bit of Martha in our response to our problems when somebody we love is sick or some, something that we need help with and we pray out to God knowing that he loves us and he doesn't seem to be showing up. I wanna first look, even though it comes second, I wanna first look at Mary's response. So I think we jump down to about verse 28. Martha had already encountered Jesus when he landed four days after Lazarus had died. And, and Mary... Um, after Martha had speaking, was speaking to Jesus, Mary went out to speak to him. And it says that Jesus has not, in verse 30, uh, Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews uh, who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said these words, Lord, if you had have been here, my brother would not have died. So how did Mary feel in this moment? She felt let down by God. And the truth is, if any of us want to admit it that have been on the road of faith a while, there's been times where in the midst of our struggle, we have maybe felt let down. Maybe we have put God in a box. Because see, Mary decided that because as a Jew, they believed that after three days, the soul left the body. So maybe if God had came in her mind and her time limit, maybe within three days, it'd be okay. But this was the fourth day. It was too late. 
So Mary put God in a box, Jesus in this case, and said, if you had a came. What does she say? If you had have been here, my brother would not have died. And she said, that's it, God. That's how I feel. You know, there's two ways we can operate in life. We take a choice. We operate by faith or we operate by sight. And Mary here was operating by sight. Mary said, look at the facts. I have a guy that I work with and he loves to say, the facts are the facts. Come to me with facts. I don't want to talk about anything else, but give me the facts. Wants to live by sight. Mary was living by sight. Here it is. Here are the facts. My brother is dead and you could have came, but you didn't show up. But Martha, on the other hand, let's look at what she said. In verse 20, Martha heard that Jesus was coming. She went out to meet him, but Mary stayed home. Lord, Martha said, you'll, you'll recognize these words. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. She said the same thing, but she went on to say, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. That sounds like a little more faith. I kind of like that Martha comes out a little bit better in this story. We're so familiar with the story of Mary and Martha where poor Martha gets a bad rap. Here, she said the same thing as Mary, but she went on to say, wait, okay, I'm gonna give a different answer. I, I can live by, by sight and see that, yes, God, you did not show up for me in this, but I believe, she said, that if you ask even now, even now, after four days, she didn't box God into quite the same time limit. She said, even now, God will give you what, whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, well, I know he will rise in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And yes, she replied. So I want to say this. That sounds to me a lot like head knowledge about God. We all have lots of it, many of us. We know that God is the resurrection and the life, don't we? No one questions that. In this story, Martha never questioned who God was. In fact, if you look what she said, she says to him, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. She makes almost the most bold proclamation in the gospel of who Jesus was. So I want you to see this because this is really cool. Martha, she believed in God. She believed that Jesus was the Messiah. She believed that he was the Son of God. She didn't really want to just live by sight, but... She didn't live by faith in a present Jesus that was able to be present and active in her actual situation. Do you see the difference? I feel like many of us can relate to Martha. How many of you have said, I know he could. I hope he would. I pray he will. I wish he might. We don't really doubt that God has the power. And that's what I see with Martha. She's, she's in this situation. Her brother's been dead for four days, but she knows who she's talking to. She knows that he has the power to do something, but she doesn't have any confidence of what that is. She has some information. He's the resurrection and the life. But what does that mean? That is a word that's not alive in her. Okay, so it's something that she's heard, but it's not alive. So I want to look at that. that. That is that Mary and Martha neither heard the word that God gave. What did Jesus say in the beginning of this story in verse four? It would not end in death, Ken, thank you. See, they knew that. I mean, I believe as I've looked at this story that they sent messengers who said somebody came and showed up where Jesus was and said, Lazarus is sick. And he said to them, it will not end in death. But somehow she didn't hear it in all the commotion. And they did not have a word for this situation for today. 
And I want us to look at an incredible verse, Romans 10, 17. This verse says, faith comes from what is heard. I want you to hear that. Let's say that one more time. Faith comes from what is heard. God spoke, but she didn't hear. Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes from the word of Christ. But you know what word is used in there for that, that word of Christ? That is the rhema. I don't know if you've heard of this before, but the rhema is the living, active word of God. Do you remember a few weeks back when we spoke about um, the, the man who was paralyzed, and Jesus met him by the pool, and he went over to him, and he said, stand up pick up your mat and walk. Before Jesus spoke that, that man couldn't do it. But when he spoke, that was rhema. That was a living word of God that was active and powerful. We know from the Bible in Hebrews 4, we talked about it at Bible study. We couldn't find it, but thanks to Google, we found it. It's Hebrews 4, verse 12. It says, the word of God is active. It is powerful. It is alive. When Jesus speaks, there is life and power in the words that he says, but we have to hear them. And faith comes from that. And Jesus said in Isaiah, or sorry, the Lord in Isaiah said, my word, when it goes out, will not return void. And I've heard that a long time. I've heard that prayed since I was a little girl in church. A lot of times, maybe at my pastor, before he would, they would come and preach, mostly that was always a he, um, he would say, you know, the Lord's, your word is gonna go out and it won't return void. But the word that goes out and accomplishes is not my word. It is the living word of God. And in this verse, in this story, Jesus spoke a living rhema word. He said, it will not end in death. And when he spoke that, the power went out for that word to be accomplished. And that word was not gonna fail. When we hear a word from the Lord that comes from him, whether it comes from scripture and it comes alive, have you had that happen? Where you're reading a scripture and something comes alive for you in that moment and you know that that word is for you, it becomes alive and active and it can accomplish. When we preach, the word can sometimes come to, to you specifically and it can be alive and accomplish that which with which what it was sent out for. And in this, in this story, the word was there, it wasn't heard. And so Mary was struggling putting God in a box and Martha was struggling wanting to live by faith but really struggling with, you know, he's been dead for four days and God coulda, shoulda, woulda, but didn't. Jesus said in John chapter six, the words I speak are spirit and life. When Jesus, I have a Bible study groups with Becky, Mandy, and some of the young ladies, Nicole, we get together. We, we were doing some stories from Jesus, and one of the stories we looked at was when he calmed the storm. And in that verse, what does he say? He goes out and he says to the storm, silence, be still. And even the wind and the waves obey him. The sea was calm. The water was calm. My favorite part of that story, just a quick sidetrack, is, is down in Cuba when Elise Ney was tra translating that, <laughs> that story. She was translating the silence, be still. And so she said to the, to the crowd in the, her language of English, shut up. Jesus spoke to the storm, shut up. But the storm was quieted. It was still. That's my, I can't help but think of that when I hear the silence, be still. That silence be still was an active word. When Jesus spoke to the blind eyes, that was a rhema word. They, they could see when he unblocked the deaf ears. Jesus demonstrated over and over power over the body, power over the natural, the wind and the waves, provision. Because when that word comes alive, bread can multiply, ears can open, whatever it is. So here in this story, as we look at Mary and Martha's response, we recognize that faith comes from hearing, but they didn't hear. They had no present faith for who God was 
in their everyday circumstance. And that's a, a sharp word that I believe that God is, is speaking to us because we have issues. We all have, we have troubles and trials and, and struggles. I mean, many of us are, are praying for, for children, for lost people that we love, for family, and we, we believe God can. There's no question there. But we are, we are living without hearing in all of our hokey pokey that we're doing, like Harmony and Jaden and Mandy showed us this morning, and all these actions that we're doing, we're running, we're talking, we're talking, but we're not listening. And I was thinking this week of the story um, after the transfiguration when the disciples couldn't cast out the demon. Do you remember that story? The disciples had been sent out to, to cast out demons to heal the sick, but this one situation came, and they couldn't do it. And Jesus said, if you have faith, even a tiny bit of faith, you could say to a mountain, move, and it would be done. But, but yet, they couldn't do it. And I, I, that honestly puzzles me. Why does Jesus say that we could, we, anything is possible? We could say to a mountain, if we have a little bit of faith, have you ever wondered, seriously wondered? Like, I, I have faith. I can't pray to a mountain to move, and, and I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. And Jesus said, you know, that you need prayer and fasting. And you know what that said to me until this week? Honestly, that says, disciples, I put myself in those shoes and said, you know what? I'm not accomplishing sometimes for the Lord because I'm not praying enough and I'm not fasting enough. And this week, it hit me, that's not true. It might be true, but it's not true. The truth is, when Jesus said, pray and fast, he is speaking to a communion with him. He's not saying, get on your knees and talk, 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 talk. If you're praying for your lost kids, pray, 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 fast for them, pray for them, pray, and talk and talk and talk. He's saying that, come to me, connect with me commune with me. Let's get together and listen. Listen, because if I speak, and this is what I want you to hear, if he speaks to you in the secret place, a word, that word you can take to the bank. That word is power. That word is life-giving. That's what Jesus meant when he said, the words I speak are spirit and life. When he speaks to us, and he will speak, those words are power and life. And I was reminded this week, even as I was soaking in the truth of this, man, there's so many times that I'm probably doing the hokey pokey and I'm dancing all about, but I'm not hearing. Like Martha and Mary, they missed it. He said a word that was gonna bring life to their brother, but they just missed it. They didn't hear it. And so today, for us, as many of different faces as I look out across and see, we have all that many different lives. We have that many different situations. We have that many different things going on. But God knows. He knows each one. He knows your heart. He knows what's on your mind. He knows what you need. And if you have felt that maybe there's this one spot where God let you down, Maybe there's just one place where he didn't show up for you and you boxed him in and closed him off and said, that, sorry, God, you let me down. I would encourage you today to, to let this story speak fresh to you. God had a plan. Jesus knew what he was doing when he waited. He didn't abandon them. He has a word to speak into our lives for whatever is on our hearts, wherever we are, whatever we need. But we have to listen to hear it. Because faith comes from hearing. And what did Mark say last week? I believe he preached, Pastor Mark, just last week on the temptations. And we hear that Jesus, how did he respond? He said, man does not live on bread alone, but on on it, every word. You know, I've heard that many, many times, but you know what I've generally heard when I live that, when I hear that? Man does not live on bread alone. Da, 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 da. I, I know there's more, but I know that it says man does not live alone. But I didn't realize 
It came alive like rhema for me this week, a fresh word. We live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Do you hear that? So let's look at our story. We live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus said, verse 43, with a loud voice to a man that was dead past anybody's expectation of what he could still work in. He said, Lazarus, come alive, come out. And what happened? Lazarus, a dead man, stood up and walked out free. I mean, that is incredible truth for us today. The word of God is living, it's active, it's alive, and it's present. And if we would listen and hear, then the dead things in us, the things that maybe we've locked away, the things that we've lost hope for, the things that we need, God has a word for us. If we will press in and listen and be still and know that he is God. I have, we have to be a little bit careful about this because as I, was, as I was praying even last night about what this means, so I said, okay, God, I'm kind of getting it. I, I might be a little bit slow to put it all together, but I'm starting to understand. I need to listen wherever I'm at for what you have to speak into my situation. Okay, but I can't manipulate and control God. He's not there for my beck and call. It reminded me of a story that I shared at Bible study. Um, one time, Marty and I were praying about moving, and I asked my grandmother to pray. And my grandmother, she's beautiful soul, she said, okay, of course I'll pray with you. And I said, I'm gonna pray and fast, you pray and fast, and let's see what the Lord says. So I had went away, came back to visit her, and she says, well, I have no idea what you're supposed to do, but I heard something from the Lord. And what she heard from the Lord actually had to do with my calling in ministry and the anointing that my grandfather ended up praying over my life. That's what she heard. She didn't hear, yes, move, no, move. See, the words rang so true. Who is the author of our faith? The author is the Lord. He is the author, the one who is the one who writes the faith, the writes the word. It is him. It's not for me. I don't get to say, God, here's my problem, and now you speak that you're gonna fix it the way I want so that that now is alive and I'll believe for it to be true and anything's possible now because I'm believing that this exact thing that I want is gonna be mine. I mean, I think that's why we sometimes struggle. Well, why, why does the Bible say if you have faith, you can move a mountain, but I'm praying and nothing's moving. It's because it moves when we hear that it was God's decision. Many of you know our Cuba friends. Elsie shared a story with me that was very powerful and relates to this. She actually shared this story, and I might have shared it with some of you before, but she shared it, but I only heard part of it. And it was not till I heard the full story that I was like, wow, this is an incredible lesson. She, and let me tell you before I tell you that, she, we had been in Cuba and we were out doing an outdoor concert and it was a beautiful evening when it started out and we had all the sound equipment outside and everything set up and then what do you think happened? It started the rain. Oh no. So what did we do? Lord, we believe you can move mountains. We know you can stop the rain. You're in control. We just started shouting in all the direction, but you know what? Nothing happened and we felt, oh. Many of us knew that Elsie had prayed for the rain to stop and it stopped. Why? That's not fair. What's wrong with my faith? Did I not pray enough? Did I not fast enough? The whole point was Elsie Yes, it's same thing happened at a concert earlier, but she was in prayer. Before the concert started, a concert that the Canadians weren't at, before it started, she was in on her face before the Lord in the church in prayer, and she heard the Lord, not with audible ears. Like, she didn't hear him talk out loud. So if that confuses you, well, God doesn't say things to me. She just sensed in her spirit when she was praying about this event that they were doing evangelism, she sensed in her heart, oh my land, it's gonna rain. 
And she just knew it and she kept praying and oh Lord. And he said, you're gonna pray and I'm gonna stop it. (gasps) No, she was like, no, no, what? I don't want to, I'm scared. And she said on and on she went and and she kept praying for a while and then the event came. And what do you think happened? Started the sprinkle and what do you think was happening in her? (gasps) She was freaking out. But she said, that was a rhema word from God. It was living and it was alive and it was active and powerful and it was for her and she knew it. So what did she do? She stepped up with fear and trembling to the mic and she commanded the rain to stop in Jesus' name and it stopped. Amen. Whoo, that's exciting. But for us, at first, I was very puzzled. Like, what are we lacking? Why didn't the rain stop for us? Do you see the difference? It's not in how hard we pray or the words that we say. The life comes from the Spirit. It comes from the Lord and his word for our life. And so I wanna encourage you today. If you have not yet heard the word that takes you from darkness to life where God has said that I want you and I want you to follow me, that is the resurrection word of life for you and for your life. And it's for today. And I would encourage you, if there's anyone in this place who says, you know what? I might be not physically dead like Lazarus, but I know that I'm dark and dead inside. I know that's me. If that is God speaking to you in this moment as you hear it, that's a rhema word. That's a word where God speaks into the darkness and by faith in him and believing, he snatches us out of the darkness and brings us into glorious light. Not by might, not by power, by his spirit, by the word that comes directly to your heart and calls you on to salvation. He is the resurrection, the truth, the only way, and life. And that is his desire that he would call your name. If you're in darkness, It's not Lazarus, but it's your name. Come out, come alive, come to me. That is his desire for all of us. And for many of us, we have accepted that call. We are followers of the way. We believe in Jesus, but maybe we're a little bit like Martha. Maybe we struggle. Hopefully we're not in this story like Mary because she just boxed him right off. Too late, God, you didn't show up. But maybe we're like Martha. We believe he could, he should, I'll pray he might. But we need to press in to live our lives by revelation, by truth that comes from hearing God. And God, I will assure you, will speak to you. I was encouraged this week, even as Brian shared at Bible study. He said, you know what? God says it, I believe it. And look around, he's everywhere. He hears God speaking to him just in nature. God speaks to us through the word, through preaching, through prayer, through listening. Whatever your need today, I want you to know that God wants you to be reminded that his word is life and we live by every word that comes from his mouth. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the reminder today that we do not live by bread alone. We don't live by sight, that you are higher and your ways and your thoughts are so far beyond us mere people and what we can understand and know. Lord, help us to trust when we hear from you that your inhering faith would be activated in our lives And Father, I pray if there's anyone that here that is in that situation of death and darkness like Lazarus, it doesn't have to be for show. It doesn't have to be in front of everyone. It doesn't have to be anything more than a simple word. Lord Jesus, I see that I am in darkness, but I believe that in you I can have life and I want to follow you. Lord, I pray that you would speak those words of life today. And Father, for those that are here and have needs and have in some areas lost hope or feel that they can't hear you, 
I pray that you would be reminding them this day that you desire to have communion, to have fellowship, to speak words of life that are powerful and active, but we need to listen. So Lord, thank you for this reminder. God, I thank you for these people and that they have come today into your house, Lord. I pray that as they go today from here, that they would leave with some truth that you would continue to work out in their lives and in their hearts. And Father, I ask that if there would be any areas that you need to, to work, that if you are speaking to them, that you are putting your finger on, Lord, I pray that they would have obedient hearts. And I ask by the power of your name that you would bring life into those areas and hope and peace and joy. Father, help us to establish ourselves with a new commitment today as members of the body of Christ, that we would listen, that we would encourage each other to hear and, and hear what you would have to say, that we may have faith to call, command the reins, to command deaf ears, to command blind eyes to be open, because we read it, but we haven't experienced it, God, but maybe we just haven't heard you speak. So open our ears, God, today and teach us to listen. We ask in Jesus' precious name, amen.